What's going on? Hope your day is doing splendid. Look, today we're talking about prayer. I've only ever mentioned it in my videos, but today we have a full video on it. At least one aspect of it. Let's get ready. Bro, for the longest time, I never prayed. If you know my testimony, you know that in grade 11 and 12, I lived out like a Christian life, like pseudo Christian life. And I would always read my Bible, right? But praying was never my thing. I never prayed regularly. Except maybe just before those frozen lunches. Shout out to Hungry Man. If you know, you know. <laughs> So I never prayed for the longest time, but I kept hearing people say like, yo, prayer is important. You got to start praying. So eventually gave it a try, put some more time, put some more effort into it. And I remember thinking back um, during that time, what I prayed for a lot was just being filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, giving me opportunities to serve and love others more, you know, um, just having less fleshly desires and becoming more like Christ, doing God's will each and every day. You know, it was rather a humble experience. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding, yo. Imagine I did that. I'd be a legend. You want to know what I was praying for? A wife. <laughs> no joke. This is what I prayed for for the longest time. I prayed for a wife or a girlfriend. And yeah, I was a goofy ape, um, at least in my situation. But um, yeah, for the longest time, I thought that a wife or a girlfriend would fix a bunch of my problems. So I'd pray for like a relationship all the time. I thought my... Um, my, my intentions were pure, that they were good. Um, and so I just prayed for that for the longest time. And here I am with no wife. But I feel blessed and I'll tell you why. Just let me share one more example. <laughs> Back in grade 12, when I was figuring out what to do after high school, I was thinking of like, you know, what other skateboarding opportunities can I get? You know what I mean? So I was thinking about mission trips with skateboarding. And so I found this organization that actually got skaters uh, to live out in places like France for like a set period of time, maybe like six months or so. And you'd, you'd work there, like get a part-time, full-time job. But the point is that you're going out to these people and you're going out to these skate communities to connect with them. And so pretty much spend six months just chilling, living life, uh, you know, connecting and making disciples um, and showing Jesus to the people. I thought this prayer was on point. You know, I thought, God, help me be able to do this. I wrote this in my Bible too. And, you know, I thought this was such a good opportunity. It was in line with God's will. I'm giving up my own desires. I'm living for Him. Right? But here I am. I'm not doing skate missions. And I feel blessed. I'll tell you why. <laughs> Look, we pray for a lot of things, don't we? But you probably already know that God is not a vending machine. You can't just, like, ask for anything. You know, He'll give it to you. You know, you can't just ask for, um, Yo, God, please, I pray for a lot of money so I can buy some RP for my skins. <laughs> but I guess if you didn't know that, Check out James 4, verse 2 to 3. It says, You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask God, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your own pleasures. But let's look at the real, more elusive problem here. We can be praying prayers that are in line with God's will as well as feeling like there's no ill intentions. It's like when I was praying for the, that relationship, right? Sounds great doesn't seem like there's much wrong with it. And for a lot of people, it might be a great prayer to pray for those mission trips, right? We're living for God and stuff. It sounds great, but here's the problem. You don't truly know the darkness within your heart. Sometimes we're blind to the bad, those darker desires that hide beneath the prayers that may look good on the outside. It's sort of like Don's, right? You go to the menu, you see the pictures, the burgers look absolutely fantastic, look scrumptious. But when you get it, you see the Big Mac, it's flat and ugly just like our hearts. <laughs> and so the point of this video is to share with you the scariest and maybe hardest prayer to pray. And that is the prayer that Jesus prayed at the Mount of Olives in Luke 22, verse 42, where he said, yet not my will, but yours be done. A reason why this prayer is one of the hardest ones to pray is because as humans, we try to hold on to all our desires, right? And we're unwilling to give them to God. You might be praying for some future opportunities, some situations, right? but you're so attached to your own vision of it that you're unable to see anything more than that. A reason why we pray for God's will to be done, not our own, is because God knows infinitely more than us. We should trust Him. And so when we pray, we should not be always praying for ourselves, but we should be praying of how we can live out God's will in our daily life. Does this prayer give us all the answers all of a sudden? Not always. But it's one step closer to killing the flesh, putting our heart in the right spot, and learning to live our life for Christ and not for ourselves, which we're called to do as Christians. And so I encourage you to stop praying so much for yourself and your own desires, 
but for God and to learn to discern what he wants you to do, not what you want to do. Can you trust that his plans for you will be infinitely greater than your own? And maybe, yeah, maybe there'll be a lot of suffering in your life, a lot of challenges, but can you trust him that your life will ultimately glorify him because that's what you're called to do as his creation? And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I would love to hear thoughts in the comments below. But if you're struggling with some desires for things that you cannot get still and you're praying about it, check out this video right here. I think it might help. But that's it for me. Just remember, if anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. So please, kill the flesh.